Welcome back guys, how have you been doing? I'm glad to see you here. Now let's dive in. So in my previous video we talked about the second dragon war. It was a war that devastated the land. A war that at the end of it, nothing from the elven empire remained except for the city Sylvanos. The metallic dragons almost went extinct and so have the chromatic dragons. The war ended with the three brother mages creating such a devastating spell that it swallowed the dragon's hull. The ground opened up and just reached out and plucked the dragons out of the sky. With that, it allowed the elves to win the war. The cost was so high, the devastation so large, that the elves turned on their saviors, the three mages, and made them run away before being killed. And now, let's continue the story. For five years after the war, the three mages worked together to create the orders of high sorcery, and with that, they put down laws to govern the use of magic. Guiding others to build bastions of magic where laws could be taught, and the towers of the high sorcery were created. The dwarves of Torin were so ashamed by finding the dragon stones and helping create the second dragon war, they locked themselves in their mountain and never seen again. Five decades later, in the year 2600 BC, a barbarian Kal named Akel Irgoth unites the Kalkis barbarians and starts building their own kingdom. They found the nation of Irgoth on the booty gained by pillaging. And on a brighter note, a group of Kender were stuck in a floating citadel that crashed into the Sentinel Mountains, by that creating the second Kender nation. They called it High for when the citadel was flying, and Low for when the citadel crashed. And since then, it was shortened to High Low. Over the next 400 years, the Empire of Ergoth grows and stretches from the southern Korolish Mountains all the way to the northern shores. Skirmishes with the dwarves and with an uneasy truce, Irgoth annexes Halo and expands to the Sylvanesti borders. Trade begins with the elves and some of whom marry humans. In the year 2515, Sylvanos, the founder of the elven kingdom Sylvanesti, dies and his heir, his son, Sithil, takes the throne. He commands and orders the construction of a tower, the palace of Quineri. I'm sorry if I butchered that in memory of his father. Now these two names you want to remember. Sithas and Kithkanan were born in the years 2308. They were born to Sithel, the son of Sylvanost. I know that these are a lot of names and a lot of them are difficult, but Kithkanan and Sithas are very important, and you will see why. Okay, so in the year 2192, the elven king Sithal is mysteriously killed, apparently by human hunters, on the Sylvanesti western border. His son, Sithas, declares war on the human empire, and the elves try to drive the humans from their borders. Half-elves take sides against each other, brother fights against sister, father against son. Kithkanan, leading the elven effort against the humans, eventually helps negotiate a truce. The Highlord Dwarves from the city of Thorin migrate from their city to the Korolish Mountains to delve a new home near where was thought to be the site of Kalthax, the first Dwarven home. This new site is named Thorbadin. Thorin, in decline after its years of isolation and failed human invasions, is henceforth known as Thoradin, named the Lost Hope or Lost Home. The Western Elves, ashamed from the bloodshed between the Elves and the humans, sue for social change and declare their independence. Led by Keith Kanan, Sithal grants land to Keith Kanan and his followers. Putting the Elves aside for a minute, disputes between the new Dorvan city Thorbadin and the human empire of Irgoth over borders and mineral rights result with skirmishes. In an effort to stop the fighting between the humans, Elves, and Dwarves, Keith Kanan negotiates a peace treaty called the Swords Sheath Scroll between the Elves, Dwarves, and Ergothian nation. An enchanted forest between the lands of the Dwarves and the human is given to the Western Elves. This forest is named Qualanesti. Ergoth stops mining in the Karolish Mountains and the Dwarves relax trades restriction. The Dwarves of Thorbadin forge a replica of the Hammer of Rorix, presenting it to Ergoth as a peace offering. Annual passage of the hammer among the nations reinforces the term of the sword sheath scroll peace treaty. 
and say that three times fast. And in between the years 2050 and 2030, the Western Elves migrate to their new home of Qualanesti. And with the Elven migration, it leads to the end of the Time of Light. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one, the Time of Nights, where the really cool stuff happens.